good afternoon. In 2018, my wife Victoria and I were the winners of the Westpac Baileys uh, Farmer of the Year competition. Now, I'm just hopefully going to flick through some photos and, and set the scene of, of, our, of our Marlborough property. Uh, so this is just a view, driving up our drive, looking into our, looking into our farm. You can pretty much, the, the back bit on the right up high is not ours, but, um, and the vineyard right in close is not ours. But yeah, that, 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 that's basically what you're looking at in our property. <coughs> this is Victoria, my wife, who's uh, not here, and as they say in every you know, farming couple, there's uh, always a huge amount of strength from the wife, and, and Victoria's yeah, massive for me, and, and sad she's not here, but uh, I think she's on the way to Mount Hutt with the kids. <laughs> um, this was the day that we had our had our Marlborough Farmer of the Day field day. A part of conditions of entry is that you have to have a field day. So yeah, here we are tracking out with Lucerne um, in some of the easier country and, and looking into what I call the easier hill country. And um, the hill country that I talk about with potential, that's it. These are a mob of mixed age shoes or tutus, I'm not sure, but they're rams just with them. Very unusual for Marlborough to have Lucerne like that in, uh, in the middle of March. But uh, the, yeah, the ewes were already in that condition, but that feed is, was just crazy this year. This is this year, uh, middle of May, shearing, but just a photo to show, show the sheep, show them with their wool off, the condition of them, um, you know, a few weeks after the ram, ram removal. Ewes on the move, mixed age ewes. Uh, that was this summer. It, it's unusual for the, the background to have sort of a shade of green in it and to have that sort of amount of feed, but uh, yeah. These are hoggets. I actually sent them away grazing only because I have a relationship with a, a long term relationship uh, with a friend who, yeah, who has a part of his farm. He bought it. Bought it as a lifestyle block, and there's parts that he can't graze with sheep, and, and I'm lucky enough to be able to graze. It's not a huge area, but yeah, I see 400 hoggets in here, so we've got three shots, I think. Yes, so these weighed 53 kilos the, just well, five days before the ram went out. This is not ideal mating feed, they are on the shift this day, that's why I was in there. Um, yeah, not a good demonstration of what you've put on uh, hoggets onto mating, but. These are the year old, taken the year before, but still hoggets with uh, lambs at foot. They'll probably be in for a drench, I would think. But it gives you a good understanding of uh, the size, the condition of the hoggets, the evenness of the lambs. Hoggets at weaning time. Um, we've got one there. Oh, really. Not so flash in the feet. It's, um, yeah, it's part of the deal with us. Just from up near the top of the hill, looking out to the east, out over the coast if the cloud wasn't there. But this is sort of some of the steeper, tougher hill country, I guess, where we see you know, potential in the future. Uh, this is on the flats on about the 1st of, first of January this year. Now, not, not a normal photo um, by chance. This chamois just turned up. I was sitting talking to someone and then it just ran out of some trees. And, but it, very unusual. But it gives us you know, sort of a typical Marlborough 1st of January. Um, we got a huge amount of rain two days after this, but uh, yeah, th this is sort of a more typical Marlborough summer. This is Lucid in the foreground here that's obviously been chewed out and gone reasonably dormant. <coughs> Cows and calves coming in for weaning, I think, uh, this year. This is a laneway, really. It's not, we wouldn't leave them grazing around here, but it's obviously the way in. Yeah, harvest are not a normal thing you'd see on our property, but with the amount of lucerne we've got, and one of our options is lucerne is uh, lucerne seed. So if the season's right, we can shut country up. And um, I've done it a couple of times and haven't had the perfect result. They've each time come in under 300 kgs per hectare, which makes it marginally viable. But I was committed and we and went through with it. So th this was just an opportunity for us um, this season. Uh, we had huge rains in the autumn, so yeah, that we just cut this and, and um, a connection. Someone wanted to buy some lucerne hay, so we just turned it into a cash crop. This is this year's winter brassica. It's actually going to be for dairy cows, but yeah, it shows we've uh, we've had a pretty good uh, pretty good autumn and we've had some pretty good yields. 
this was last year, uh, probably within the two weeks leading up to skim drafting, mixed age ewes out on the Lucerne. Similar shop. Hill Country ewes coming in for skim drafting, I think. Uh, yeah, gives you an understanding of body condition and, and um, the condition the stock are in close to weaning. Same mob. Now, this will be skim drafted lambs, I think. Yeah. On the truck, which is always a fun day, I love uh, I love the rattle of that truck as it heads off down the road, and the and our sort of part of the deals deals done. This would have been a, a weaning day and a, and a pretty good moment as uh, as a couple of units headed off. Summertime, use on the hill after weaning, um, but it gives you a good indication what our country can look like. So you got to be pretty careful. We can end up with a lot of months of uh, hill country looking like this. Winter operation in, in the vineyard, um, just moving the lambs back in to take a cut out of them. These are a mob of 1,200 male lambs, which we skimmed the top out of, and they killed it around 22 kilo carcass. So, yeah, lambs have done well this this winter, and um, the last of these will actually go in Tuesday, 10 days' time. So, uh, yeah, they've been a, a good option. Just third on the hill country, uh, looking out over some of our, once again, most of this is what I'd call our better hill country, um, and, and, and there's going to be a lot of development that's already started in this country to enhance the subclover system. Photo of the infrastructure, our yards are, um, are basic but functional. We haven't spent a huge amount of resource in this area. Most of our resources have been poured into production areas. And uh, yeah, just a photo. But uh, I, I wanted to show you those photos before I kicked off into my presentation because it kind of sets the scene of, of what we're dealing with uh, in Marlborough and at home. So, so we trade under a business called Dumgree Farming Limited. Um, Dumgree is a 700 hectare, 790 hectare property, 720 effective. We're located in the lower Arwatry, so at the bottom of the Arwatry Road. We're a dry land sheep and beef property. We have 200 hectares of, of easy country that we could get a tractor over. Uh, we have 290 hectares of that medium type country and 300 hectares of steep uh, hill country. Our average rainfall is 720 mils, but we have huge variations. So it can range between 400 and 1200 millimetres, which uh, you know it can make it pretty hard work trying to um, keep the right amount of feed up to the stock all the time. We're a breeding, finishing and, tr and trading operation. We have composite, a composite ewe flock and we lamb all our hoggets. We have Angus cows, but we do not mate our heifers. We have a 140 hectare lucerne platform. We try to do the basics well, and, and a lot of what I'll say today, uh, there's nothing new, but it's trying to put it all together. On the farm, the labour is myself, uh, and I have a casual, a good casual, that does around two days a week. We've also used woofers to help uh, tidy up the property. Um, like any property, there's always opportunities to um, scruffy corners and yeah, we, we take really a lot of pride in, in, in presentation and it's an area that we, uh, yeah, we, we want to sort of keep moving forward in. We've prioritised our spending in the production area. Our, our, our ewe flock are Landcorp genetics, called Landmark Composite. These have been recently rebranded as Freestone Romney. The reason I went with these sheep is that Landcorp have huge resources and huge ability to have huge selection pressure. We carry 2,250 ewes at around 75 to 80 kilos. We scan between 180 and 200 per cent. This year, the mixed age ewe scanned 208 per cent, but averaged with the tutus in about 199. We lamb 140 to 150 per cent over three cycles. We've killed up to 72 per cent of our lambs off mum at weaning at 105 to 110 days at 19.2 kilos. That's the weight, that 19.2 is the weight up to 
the completion of weaning. So the key drivers to our ewe flock, starting at pre-mating, are a high, even body condition score, ideally in the three to the three and a half range. We take lights off well before mating and preferentially feed them to bring them up to that condition. We feed for weight gain over mating. If we are short on feed, we will prioritise to feed well at the start of mating. Our main mating feeds are saved lucerne, brassicas, grass if we have a, have a good autumn, and hay, lucerne hay and grain if we need to. We aim to maintain or have a small weight loss through until four weeks pre-lambing. In the build up to lambing, we increase the availability, we keep the used fit, but try not to overfeed. We set stock on 1600 kgs of dry matter average, and this is a huge driver and been a huge change for us. Wayne Allen with the Beef and Lamb Sheep Profit Partnership stressed this, and, and once we learnt to plan and feed at this level, our lamb growth rates really changed. On the hill country, we lamb at three to four to the hectare. We do this to hold covers, and the lowing stocking rate gives us good survival. We also have large blocks, and if we stocked at higher rates, they might all lamb in the bottom five hectares and we could end up with two or three hundred ewes in one small area. In the second cycle, we lamb ewes on lucerne. This would be at four to six ewes per hectare. We're happy to set stock on lucerne at a lower rate on the condition that the lucerne will grow away underneath the sheep. From lambing onwards, quality is absolutely key. We will have lush lucerne, we will not graze it too hard, we will try not to let, let it get stalky, and, and post, post tailing, we will try to have mobs of three to 350 twins, at about eight to nine to the hectare, so in cells of 40 hectare blocks. Ideally in the hill country, we want as high a sub-clover percentage as possible, and this is an area we're working on. At weaning, we skim draft down to 38 to 40 kilos with a goal of 40, dollar, uh, 40 kilos plus carcass weight. Every season's different, so we have to be flexible. The lucerne seems to be more reliable than the hill country. We wean the hill ewes when the quality falls, and traditionally we've probably done this too late. We kill down to 33 to 35 kilos, season dependent at weaning. We wean the sheep on the lucerne to leave covers too, feed the two-tooth ewes through the summer, have the ability to feed light ewes, and to feed our hoggets well, and ideally finish our remaining lambs. We will go through and cull the ewes on condition, feet and age. As soon as possible after weaning, we'll ID our light ewes and end up with a mob of 300 to 600 and feed well. So I feel our, our key drivers in our ewe flock are the landmark composite genetics, the high body condition score at mating time, the weight gain over mating, the 1600 kg covers that we set stock on, the quality feed we can provide from lambing onwards, the plan to wean the sheep on lucerne that wean the sheep that are on lucerne to leave covers to feed the tutus through the summer, to feed the light ewes and to feed the hoggets. And the selection pressure to cull 
so we have a strong mob of sheep. Our hoggets. This is my favourite mob. We'll select 600 to 650 from well over a thousand lambs from our mixed age ewes. We'll select 200 to 250 from a group of 350 from our hoggett replacements. We'll cull on size, condition, wool, feet and dag score. We keep these hoggets in two mobs. The first mob will be mainly made up of the 600 and they will stay on Lucerne and the lambs from the hoggets and the smaller of the, of the mixed age lambs, so we'll have two groups of around 450, the smaller ones will be on Brassica as we seem to get slightly better lamb growth rates over the summer on Brassica. These lambs or replacement ewe lambs are fully fed. They should reach 50 kilos by the 1st of March. We made on the 10th of April at 52 to 54 kilos. There is no tail end in them. We mate for 40 days to the landmark ram. We scan them into two groups, the first 20 days and the second 20 days. In 2017, we scanned 146% and lambed 108. We had 13% dry, and we kill our dry hoggets. In 2016, the dry hoggets killed out at a 26 kilo average. We feed them well and steadily over the winter. Ideally, we do not underfeed, and ideally, we do not overfeed. At set stocking, we just let them have it. All on Lucerne. In 2016, our, our hoggett lamb growth rates were better than our ewes, only about two, two, uh, two grams a day average, but they still, uh, yeah, one was 301, one was 299. We killed 62% off mum at 18.2 kilo carcass. Post weaning, we keep feeding them to remate in top condition at three and a half condition body score. It's really critical that we look after these sheep. It's too easy to wean them and forget about them. And, and years ago, I, I did do that. I, and I actually peeled five kilos off them, which I was disappointed in. But um, they can't just get put up on the hill like the good condition, uh, the good condition uh, mixed age ewes. So the key drivers here for me are the high selection pressure, fully fed from weaning onwards. We have no tail end. We feed them steadily over the winter. We don't need to, for them to put on a lot of weight. We don't need to drop any weight, just nice and steady. At set stocking, we feed them extremely well. They're fed extremely well all the way through to, uh, to weaning. and I guess the goal of having them remate in top condition. Our cow herd. Cow numbers have lifted from 105, lifted to 105 from 85. They're, they're an Angus breed. The reasons uh, they've lifted, we have large hill blocks that need grooming. We've culled some older cows and we've leased a neighbouring hill block that was the residual of a vineyard purchase that suits cows better. We have about an 85% calves to sale. I see this as a conception issue, not a, not a calf survival. We wean around 265 uh, live kilos live weight at weaning and have averaged that for the last couple of years. We do not mate our heifers due to the extreme dry risk I feel this gives us flexibility, flexibility to uh, shut one mob down, but this policy is under review. I see this as a large 
area of opportunity and, and, and certainly am not particularly proud of my, my cow performance. Our trading operation. Note that all options have flexibility. Summer lambs. This includes homebred lambs. We will keep lambs of our own or trade lambs only when our tutus are well fed, our light ewes and our hoggets have been prioritised. We would sell stores as often as we would buy them in and I am very happy to sell smaller lamb, long term lambs. We trade autumn bulls at 350 kilos to 400. We can use these to help clean up. We aim to winter and kill them in the late spring, early summer and the heavier bulls give us flexibility. This is only an option if we have summer or early autumn rain. Winter lambs. We aim to finish 1,500 to 2,000 winter lambs and these graze on vineyards and lucerne mainly. But they can also be fed on winter crops. We buy medium to better lambs, ideally again creating flexibility. Winter dairy cows. We can have numbers to suit, season and the return dependent. I try not to trace, chase the highest return all the time. I like to build and maintain relationships with, with, dairy, with dairy farmers and then always like to keep that, that relationship going. And, and I really enjoy the connection with the dairy industry. Winter bulls. Purchased June, July, 400 plus kilos. We know how the winter's going. We know what's in front of us. And we know what a, how much moisture's in the soil. And we, we know where our early spring's going to be. So we're sort of in control at that time. Other feeding or oh, other trading options are to sell in lamb ewes, sell ewes with lambs at foot, wean early and sell stores. Present stock numbers are 3,700 capital stock units. This winter, 2018, we have over 5,000 trading stock units and this is the highest we've ever had. Having a huge amount of trading stock gives us flexibility and the ability to maintain a capital stock performance. It's this flexibility being one of the key drivers to our system. Our feeding system. The horsepower behind our system is the, is, is the Lucerne platform, 140 hectares at present. This is by far the singest, single biggest influence on change. Years ago, Pete Anderson was uh, helping do a stop a animal performance consultation. Pete's helped me for years and, and has been great. But uh, Pete was at home and we were talking things through and, and, and I was explaining to Pete that we had 20 or 30 hectares of lucerne and the plan was to get to 80 hectares and, and, and Pete made the comment uh, to me that oh, once you get to 80 you want 200 and I remember listening and I, I try to always listen and remember and take things in but definitely thought to myself uh, Probably unlikely, but um, but yeah, I, I took it on board. But uh, in hindsight, Pete was right. You know, we will end up very close to 200 hectares. The Lucerne has given given us the ability to produce high quality feed, high yields for long periods, and is a true perennial in our environment, lasting eight to 12 years. Lucerne will grow large amounts of high ME, a high ME feed that we can push into the shoulders of the season. This is due to its deep tap root and water efficiency. I've got a bit of stolen IP. Now, ryegrass will produce 14 kilos of dry matter per millimetre of moisture. Ryegrass with clover will produce 22 kilos of dry matter per millimetre of moisture. Now, does anyone want to have a guess what lucerne will do? 28. Um, th this is only relevant when there is, w when there is either 
pressure for moisture. You know, a lot of the time there is no limitations on moisture. But, um, yeah, lucerne has the ability to carry large amounts of high ME feed into the unproductive periods. So it'll, it'll grow in the good, in the, in the good uh, part of the season, but will sit there as, as it gets dry. One of the issues with the lucerne at home is we have whorehound on the property. Now anyone that has experience with uh, whorehound and lucerne, they, they don't go well together. The whorehound loves the gaps in the lucerne and uh, grows extremely well. So we, we're very active on, on grubbing the uh, lucerne paddocks. We grub them once to twice a year. Uh, yeah, I heard the comment once that um, this plant, you know, will certainly put you out of business in, in a lucerne system. If you've got, if you've got a uh, lucerne and, and there is a little bit of whorehound, yeah, get onto it. Subclover in the hill country. Our 600 hectares of hill country grows subclover well. Half our lambs are produced in this area. Subclover would be our highest ME feed. We are going to develop this system. Our cropping program, our most common cropping rotation is summer rape that then goes, gets sprayed out into winter Italian, is then summer fallowed and goes into winter rape, and then we'll go into lucerne. In 2017-18, we have 20 hectares of summer brassica, 24 hectares of winter brassica, 22 hectares of Italian ryegrass. We aim to dr drill for up to 43 hectares of lucerne this season on around the 10th of October. We also have 250 hectares of vineyards available for grazing and this is a huge asset. So the key drivers in this fe feeding system are the high quality feed of lucerne, the high yields, and the, the long periods that it will produce. But lucerne will grow large amounts of feed, uh, large amounts of high ME feed into the shoulders of the season, and that we can carry large amounts of feed into the unproductive periods. The fact that half our lambs are produced on subclover, and that subclover would be our highest ME feed. Our opportunities going forward will be to have more lucerne, up to 180 to 190 hectares. There is an opportunity to have more attention to detail with so soil fertility. Before I entered the competition, I thought I'd done a reasonable job of uh, soil fertility. We'd, all, we'd regularly test it as we developed certain areas of the farm and it addressed what we needed. Through the time of the, the competition, um, looking for more up-to-date soil tests on certain areas, uh, we hadn't sort of kept up with as much testing as we should have. We'd only really re uh, tested new areas. And uh, since the competition, we've done a huge amount of uh, soil testings and, and really found wanting in some of those areas we thought we'd addressed. Some of the pHs were as low as 5.2 and um, the peas were generally pretty good, but uh, it certainly opened a, a, a big opportunity. So yeah, we'll be doing more regular uh, soil, for soil testing and, and, and working on the trends of where we're tracking. Other opportunities are, are our cow performance and cattle genetics. I'd love to have a full-time uh, labour unit on the farm. I think this would he help with attention to detail. It will calm things down a little bit and I might enjoy every day a little bit more. I'm really keen to improve our subclover system. At present, we're subdividing six hill country blocks into 14. They'll be an average of 12 hectares. They'll all have electric. Who knows what growth, growth rates we will get with these genetics and this subclover system, maybe up to 100 grams a day more. Dam water has already been put into these blocks. We will truck lime on into any areas that we can get the truck. I also hope to lamb for only two cycles and not the three. 
My goals are to clear 90% plus off mum at a 21 kilo carcass average. We want to wean 150% plus consistently. We need to either improve our triplet survival or to breed a ewe flock that has more twins. I want to lamb 120% from my hoggets. A vision to produce a lamb with no tailing and no drenching at 90 to 100 days should be the best eating experience we could possibly get. For uh, you know the younger guys that, that you know that are pretty motivated, you know you want to be hungry for information. Try and keep an open mind, as we've had really well uh, demonstrated to us today, and uh, surround yourself with good people.